Tonight, prepping for the snow after a brutal start for plows last winter. A look at how Duluth plans to be better prepared to clear the streets this year. And making an investment. Millions of dollars are on their way to a northwest Wisconsin city to bring affordable housing to the area. Plus, Bentleyville is drawing closer. A look at plans in place to control a traffic nightmare in Canal Park. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. With last year's massive Thanksgiving weekend snowstorm still fresh on many people's minds, Duluth residents are wondering what changes they can expect this year when it comes to snow removal. CBS 3's John Cardinelli joins us live from Duluth's Chester Park neighborhood. John, what are some of these changes? Kristen, Tony, you may remember the city intended to start a snow emergency ordinance this year, and that ordinance would have allocated $500,000 towards new signage on residential and city streets like the one I'm standing on that would show people the emergency routes as well as, well there, as, well as where they would be able to park. However, that plan had to be put on hold due to the pandemic, but city leaders tell us today they have a new plan in place that will hold people accountable and will give plow drivers an easier time plowing these streets. Starting November 1st, Duluth residents can expect to receive a mailer with information about parking and sidewalk enforcement as well as plowing. This year, the city will start taking complaints from residents on their website regarding uncleared sidewalks. The city is working with private contractors who will help clear those uncleared sidewalks. Residents who need this service will be billed by the city. Also, city leaders say parking enforcement will be taken very seriously this year. If cars are not being moved to the other side of the street on Sundays for plow drivers, parking enforcement and now police will be handing out tickets or requesting tows. And this is all in an effort to clear streets more effectively. A car parked illegally on the wrong side of the street can make it impossible for us to plow. Uh, an entire block or more, depending on if there's uh, any other way in. Uh, if we have to drive past that, that block street and keep rechecking it throughout our plowing process, it slows everything down and keeps us from providing the best possible service to everyone. City leaders also say that if a road needs to be cleared, they want residents to submit complaints online instead of calling the plow service this year since staffing is limited due to COVID-19. And the city intends to start the snow emergency ordinance next year. It'll begin in the spring, and that's when they plan on installing those signs. And coming up later tonight at 10, we'll have much more on the new plan the city set forth today. I know. After last year's big storm, changes a lot of people are hoping to see. Thanks, John. Dave's here for a quick look at the weather. Dave, some snow out there for some folks, but overall a warmer day compared to uh, yesterday. Yeah, the low pressure system that brought in the clouds also brought up temperatures okay. in general a range of about 35 to 40 degrees, which is still cooler than normal, but warmer than it's been the past couple of days. And here's a look at a couple of towns here. International Falls, 36, 41 on Park Point and in Superior, 40 for Hayward, but only 34 degrees in Ely. Cool enough there for a burst of snow more than the rest of the region got out of a 30% chance here today. Two to three inches in town and some places outside of town got towards five inches. I'll show you a picture on that coming up for the main weather, but right now we'll show you the upper Midwest, which shows that low pressure system and its flurries for most and snow for others is leaving. Higher pressure will take over for Thursday. So our day planner looks like this. We should get some sunshine back into our picture, maybe more so on the Minnesota side of the border than Wisconsin and the UP. Temperatures tomorrow morning, not bad at 23, but the daytime highs tomorrow do fall back a little bit, maybe mid-30s if we're lucky. But our extended forecast shows signs of a warm-up back into the 40s, maybe even 50 next week. I'll tell you when we can expect that coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Well, we are about three weeks away from the opening day of Bentleyville. The holiday light display will host a drive through experience due to the pandemic, but there are still a lot of questions about how it will all work. CBS 3's Leon Valdez took a tour with the mayor of Bentleyville himself and shows us how you'll navigate the tour of lights this year. This has been a tradition for some people for 17 years. The COVID-19 pandemic couldn't keep Bentleyville in Duluth from lighting up. 
People are just happy that there's something to go to and there's something to do. But executive director of Bentleyville, Nathan Bentley, says it did change how people will tour the lights. We do expect it to be extremely busy. Uh, we ex expect the cars to be going very, very slow. Visitors will have to stay in their cars and drive through to see the displays. Even if drivers try to come through Canal Park, you'll be redirected back to Railroad Street via Garfield Avenue. Once you come into the from the west, you're going to come into Bentleyville the way you always have through the traditional entrance. Cars will be queued up in what was once the parking lot for the light show. We're going to have our costume characters out there. You'll be able to turn your radio to a particular station to start hearing the Bentleyville music. So are people going to drive through here? They're going to literally drive through. Uh, they will drive on these mats. Visitors will drive through tunnels, meaning there's some limits on what vehicles should come. The specs on our website state that you need to be at 20 feet or less, and it's not because of the straight tunnels. It's because of corners here and a corner down there. Bentley says the entire drive through experience will take about 15 minutes, but the wait could be longer. Bentley is asking for visitors to have patience. You could potentially be waiting in the queued-up area for quite some time, and we won't really know how long that is until after we have a first busy weekend. This year, they are asking for a $10 entrance fee to cover some of the production costs. The first day to catch the light display is November 21st. A popular Duluth musician is hoping a big donation will help change the tune for teens in need. Charlie Parr recently auctioned off one of his guitars. It went for $20,000, money he's donating to the Duluth Lifehouse organization. Lifehouse helps connect homeless teens with the resources they need to get on track. Their executive director says this money couldn't have come at a better time. At this time, we are kind of um, just supporting our young people in the winter months and the kind of mental health and wellness struggles and kind of thinking through how to incorporate more music-based uh, wellness into our supportive services. Next year will be the organization's 30th anniversary. They've served almost a 1,000 teens over the years. We have information on how you can donate on our website. And if you're looking for more ways to give back, Superior High Schoolers are stepping up to help those in need. They're holding a hygiene drive starting Monday. The students will collect donations at both Superior Super One locations. We have their dates and hours on our website. More back and forth over Enbridge's plan to replace its aging Line 3 pipeline. An environmental group is now asking regulators to check Enbridge's pipeline capacity. In a court filing yesterday, the group Honor the Earth claims Enbridge never mentioned pipeline capacity additions during recent hearings. Enbridge wants to replace its Line 3 pipeline, which runs from Alberta to a terminal in Superior. In a statement today, Enbridge reps say they have been transparent all through the regulatory process, which has lasted six years now. They say the permit for the Superior Terminal reflects current and future crude oil volumes through the terminal, which includes increased volumes from a replaced Line 3. They added those volumes fluctuate based on customer needs. A joint investigation brought down what the FBI is calling the largest elder fraud scheme in the country. U.S. Minnesota attorney Erica McDonald announced the bust in Minneapolis this morning. She says 150,000 victims from around the country lost $300 million. Sixty people face charges in connection to the scam. According to court documents, over the last 20 years, they used fake magazine sales, companies, and telemarketing call centers to trick people into making large or repeat payments. They also threatened people to scare them into pain. Court documents are shedding new light on the case against a Duluth man charged with murder in an overdose case. 35-year-old Luke Hansmeyer is charged with first-degree reckless homicide. According to court documents, Hansmeyer acted as a middleman. He received opioids from someone, then passed them on to Colton Leary, a superior man. Leary is also charged with felony possession. Leary sold the opioids to the victim, who died of a fentanyl overdose in February. According to the criminal complaint, when police busted Leary, they found almost 500 pills at his home. Then police used Leary for staged cocaine buys from Hansmeyer. The documents show Hansmeyer admitted to police he had previously acted as a middleman, selling prescription opioids along with dealing cocaine. Hansmeyer faces up to 40 years in prison if he's convicted. The court documents show the pills police seized were marked, indicating they were 30 milligram oxycodone tablets. However, when they were tested, the pills included fentanyl, which is not found in real prescription opioids. In Wisconsin, people can be charged with homicide if they make or sell drugs that cause someone's death. A new affordable housing project is on the way to a Northland city that desperately needs it. Ashland city officials are happy that plans for a 50-unit affordable housing complex are now one step closer to reality. 
The city council gave their approval to a developer's $12 million plan last night. Megan McBride, Ashland's director for planning, says the lack of affordable housing has been one of the city's biggest issues for the past few years. There's a huge need we have, again, for um, young families who are moving to the area. Um, and so in terms of both our affordable and our workforce housing, we see this as uh, meeting a huge need and filling a big gap we have right now. And coming up tonight at 10, we hear from Ashland Mayor Deborah Lewis, who shares more on why she says this project is a big win for the city. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, less than a week before Election Day, Governor Walls teams up with some former governors for a public service announcement. Their message after the break. Today's high temp of 37 is still almost 10 degrees cooler than normal. But once we get through the weekend, we could be starting to look at 50, maybe for only a day, but 50 this time of year could be a break for some and a pain for others. But we'll show you the whole seven day forecast in more detail in just a few more minutes. Live, local, CBS3 News at 6 with Kristen Bucky, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS3. It's coming. You ready? Because Toro Snow Days sale is here. With the number one brand in snowblowers, you will dominate winter. And now during Toro Snow Days, get up to $100 off select two-stage snowblowers, up to $40 off select 60-volt battery snowblowers, and up to $50 off select single-stage snowblowers, plus great financing offers. Win winter with Toro. Snow piles up quickly. Remove it just as quickly with Kubota equipment. Featuring front and rear mount snow blowers, blades, and rotary sweepers, it's everything you need to take on winter. Get select Kubota equipment for zero down and 0% APR for up to 60 months. See your local Kubota dealer today. No one serves you better than Lula Chipman. St. Anne's Assisted Living, here when you needed us before, here when you need us now. We're open for business. Call to schedule your personal tour now. 218-727-8831. We can help you at Ketamine North Infusion Center. I was stuck in a gray area. The first treatment, I actually laughed and scared myself because I hadn't heard myself laugh in years. Visit us online. Be well with us at Ketamine North Infusion. Enhance your quality of life. Increase your mobility. Achieve your potential. For specialized, individualized care, call Northern Orthotic and Prosthetic Center, providing the professional care you deserve. Northern Orthotic and Prosthetic Center, serving people throughout Northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Upper Michigan. What do you get when you add care from Essentia Health and coverage from UCARE? Essentia Care, now available for a more affordable price. Essentia Care's Medicare Advantage plans have premiums that start at $0 per month in select counties. You'll be able to see your Essentia Health provider at our 15 hospitals and 71 clinics. Plus, Essentia Care plans allow you the freedom to see any provider who accepts Medicare. Compare and shop plans at ucare.org slash Essentia Care. Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. Watch Eye on Mining with Kristen Vaki every Tuesday at 10. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association, Range Regional Airport, and Miners National Bank of Evelyn. Only on live local CBS3. With ongoing racial unrest and across the nation, we're digging into the role race could play on the 2020 election. CBS3 News presents Race and Campaign 2020. The here, Kelly guys. Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. CBS3 Weather is brought to you by Lulich Implement. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Today's little low pressure system riding along the border with Canada was slated to bring us a 20 to 30 percent chance for a little rain snow mix with really just a trace expected. And a trace in my mind meant maybe towards a half an inch. Well, Ely sure proved that wrong. Here's a look at Sheridan Street where they got about three inches there according to Dave Schmidt. And outside of town we had a couple of reports coming in of five inches. But it doesn't seem like Ely shared that snow with too many other towns. Kristen coming in from the Chisholm area says they didn't get much there at at all and now our low pressure system is leaving and that's going to set us up for a couple of sunnier days here not really that much warmer but at least a little bit sunnier a chance for folks in Ely to get out and shovel I guess current conditions at the airport in Duluth show a cloudier sky a current temp of 37 degrees on a relative humidity reading of 79 percent north northwest wind it's going 10 miles per hour and our air pressure is starting to nudge up now, 29.96 inches of mercury. There is indeed a high pressure system coming in behind the departing low. And that should make for a partly cloudy sky on Thursday and maybe a mostly sunny one by Friday. Mid-30s, current temps in the Upper Peninsula, looking at 37 to 40 here in northwestern Wisconsin. In the middle of the pack is Hayward at 38. Northern Minnesota, well, let's go to East Central Minnesota first. Moose Lake Barnum area has dipped a little bit to 37. And we're also looking at low to mid 30s here along the North Shore and lower 30s teetering on the 20s here for the inland parts of the Arrowhead. Low temps tonight could fall into the teens in the interior parts of the Arrowhead while the rest of us are in the lower to mid 20s like we were this morning. So that was a bit of a nice break from that cold snap not too long ago. Doppler map right now shows our low pressure system leaving and the sky trying to slowly clear here in Minnesota and it's going to start to do that in Wisconsin and Michigan here as time goes on as well because of the high pressure system that that's sliding in. For Thursday, we may have more sunshine in Minnesota than Wisconsin or Michigan, but by Friday, it should be shared unilaterally around the area, if only for Friday, because as early as Saturday, this little trough of lower pressure comes our way. and It will help bring temperatures back into the 40s. We may just get rain showers rather than snow showers. Then after that, it'll dry up and warm up even farther. We could be staring at 50 later on next week. So let's take a look at the week. We start tonight in Minnesota with low temps running from 15 to 27 and a clearing sky. We take a look now at Wisconsin and Michigan's low temps, mid-20s there with a mostly cloudy sky. For tomorrow in Wisconsin and the UP, the sky should be partly sunny with highs from about 30 to 36, so still cooler than normal. Minnesota high temps should go from 30 to 34, still cooler than normal there as well, but with a partly cloudy sky. There's that next chance for the rain-snow mix business, probably more rain than snow Saturday, because we go to 44. And then we get back into the 40s by Monday with sunshine, and that leads us towards 48 on Tuesday and the grand climax of our story 50 on Wednesday, Tony and Kristen. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Dave. Minnesota's governor is teaming up with a group of former governors to urge people to get out and vote. So make your voice heard and vote. Vote. Go vote. Today, Governor Tim Walz was joined by former Minnesota governors Mark Dayton, Tim Pawlenty, and Jesse Ventura to create a nonpartisan PSA about the importance of voting. The group urges civility and decency around the upcoming election. It also iterates Minnesota has a safe and secure voting system and explains why results may not be final on election night. A St. Louis County judge has been recognized for helping fight drug abuse in the community. This morning, the Center for Alcohol and Drug Treatment presented the 2020 Gary P. Olson Visionary Award to Judge Sean Flurkey. Judge Flurkey presides over the St. Louis County DWI Court. The treatment center honors those who help other community members through addiction recovery. As he accepted the award, Flurkey shared his favorite quote that relates to his work. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Um, and I love that. Judge Flurkey has been presiding over the Duluth District since 2004. Tomorrow, right after the CBS 3 News at 6, a half-hour political special you'll see only here on Channel 3. For the last month, we've been analyzing the role race could play on this year's election. After a tense summer as it relates to race relations, we're digging into data that shows the Black Lives Matter movement and similar groups could prompt a flurry of action at the polls and increased voter turnout. We talked to a handful of different people who explain what could happen with the black vote next week. Here's a quick preview. How do you think this will impact black voter turnout specifically? I think that black voter turnout is going to be on the rise now. Um, what you found is that um, younger blacks did not vote 
in 2016, um, the way younger generations had previously. You can look for the full segment tomorrow after the 6 o'clock news right here on Channel 3. Coming up in sports, Wisconsin football puts a pause on team activities. Kelly has the details after the break. Brand name winter footwear available at Northwest Outlet, your winter headquarters superior. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom ring. Gone country. Going down till the sun comes up. It's 102.5. Duke So, you made it all the way up to the North Pole? Yep, and the South. But I need good Medicare coverage so I can keep exploring. Well, we have Medicare Advantage plans. Some starting at $0 a month. Can I find them online? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can give us a call. Sounds good. Well, our stop is just up ahead. So that was the shortest ride I think I've ever been on. Yeah, quarantine legs. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta work those muscles back up. I started this campaign saying we're in the battle for the soul of the nation. I believe that even more deeply today, who we are, what we stand for, and maybe most importantly, who we are going to be, it's all at stake. Character is on the ballot, the character of the country, and this is our opportunity to leave the dark, angry politics of the past four years behind us, to choose hope over fear, unity over division, science over fiction. I believe it's time to unite the country, to come together as a nation. But I can't do it without you, so I'm asking for your vote. We need to remember, this is the United States of America. And there's never been anything we've been unable to do when we've done it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Prime Appliance had hundreds of appliances on back order due to factory shutdowns. Then in one week, three truckloads showed up unexpectedly. So we decided truckload sale with overstock prices like this. GE large capacity French door refrigerators with ice and water, LED lighting, and a full warranty. Stainless just $17.79, white $21.49, and slate only $22.98. Financing always available. Have our pros deliver and install or take it home today. Prime Appliance, the best place to buy your appliances. Duke is a man of few words and many songs. Let freedom ring. Gone country. Going down till the sun comes up. It's 102.5. Duke. Season 2 is the here. The Kelly Clarkson now. Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. As the Vikings prepare for the border battle this weekend, it's looking like they could be shorthanded on the defensive side of the ball. Already thin at corner, none of their top four defensive backs practice today. Mike Hughes was at the facility but did not practice. Cameron Dantzler was placed on the COVID-19 reserve list, while Holton Hill and Chris Jones were not present at all. Now, Minnesota currently sits at one and five. After a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases on the team, the Wisconsin football team has paused all team activities. The University of Wisconsin also announced that Saturday's game at Nebraska has been canceled and will not be rescheduled. A total of 12 people within the program have tested positive, six staff members, which include head coach Paul Christ and six players based on Big Ten protocols. Players would be out for a minimum of 21 days. No word on how long the team plans to shut down team activities. And in case you missed it late last night, the Dodgers are back on top, winning the 
World Series for the first time in 32 years. But it didn't come without some drama. Late in the game, the Dodgers would pull third baseman Justin Turner. It would be later revealed that Turner tested positive for COVID-19. Without the star on the field, the Dodgers rallied in the sixth inning. Eventually, this Corey Seager fielder's choice would put L.A. in front and in front for good. Following the game, Seager commented on the Turner situation, citing how much he means to the organization. To have that happen to a, a guy like that, a, a dude that's reinvented himself when he came here, what he's meant to this organization, what he's meant to this franchise, what he's meant to this community, and to, to take that away from him, you know, it's gut-wrenching. You know, it, it hurts me. Uh, I can't imagine how he feels. Well, it didn't stop there, however. Turner ignored protocols and took the field to celebrate with his teammates. The MLB has begun an investigation. Now over in Green Bay, the trend is going in the opposite direction, Dave, as the Vikings, rather. David Bakhtiari, Alan Lazard, Christian Kirksey, Darnell Savage, and Tyler Irvin all returned to practice today after being injured. Raven Green and Kreis Barnes also practiced after leaving a Sunday's win over the Texans early. The only Packers who did not practice were Aaron Jones, Kevin King, and Mason Crosby. Head coach Matt LaFleur says no matter who ends up playing the Vikings, will bring a tough game plan. You know, it's going to be a challenge. that They play extremely hard. I don't care what necessarily the numbers say. If you look at them, uh, particularly on third down and in the red zone, they're, they're one of the best defenses in the National Football League. And Minnesota United today has confirmed a player has tested positive for COVID-19. All other first-team players and staff have returned consecutive negative tests. In accordance with CDC guidelines, the player will continue to self-isolate until medically cleared under the close supervision of the club's medical staff. Now, tonight's game against the Colorado Rapids at Allianz Field will proceed as scheduled. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. The game will be broadcast on Fox Sports North. We'll have highlights tonight at 10. That's going to do it for now. Chris and Tony, I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Kelly. Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, in recent weeks, several states, including Minnesota, have seen an increase in young voters. Tonight at 10, we hear from first-time voters in the Northland and political experts about why they're voting and how they could be the deciding factor in the 2020 election. Well, almost everyone loves chocolate, right? Although I learned today you're not a huge fan I'm of it. I'm not the biggest chocolate yeah. fan, but... Kelly made a chocolate cake. I only saw a picture of it, and it made me a yeah. chocolate fan. Well, today is National Chocolate Day, although who really needs an excuse to enjoy chocolate? Uh, most of us consume the delectable sweet on a pretty regular basis. National Chocolate Day is held every year on October 28th. The taste is intense and bitter, so the seeds must be fermented. The beans then get dried, cleaned, roasted, shelled, and mm. ground up. And there's the end result. Yeah. One of many. Dark chocolate? Milk chocolate? White chocolate? What are, what, what are we kind of feeling for favorites here? Milk chocolate, white chocolate, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> oh, no dark chocolate. Okay, I'm a big dark chocolate person. Dave, preference? Right, Tony, we married men have a couple hours to get some kind of gift ready before me. Yeah. There you go. And then we'll be out of the doghouse. Okay. <laughs> hey, up in the Ely area, if you're not a snow fan, you were in the doghouse today with a couple inches that fell there. But it's going away tomorrow as higher pressure takes over the region, bringing in sunshine for Thursday and Friday. Temperatures will step back. After some towns tasted 40 today, we drop back into the 30s. But then the 40s come with our next chance for precip on Saturday. And if we're patient, 50 is possible for a day next Wednesday. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at 10 o'clock.